Hey everybody, uh, for stars before we even begin this video, uh, thank you guys so much for the support. I know I've been saying that like a lot, but um, my subscriber count literally doubled overnight, which is insane to me. Um, and I'm really excited to be doing this and I'm excited to get more videos out there and slowly and surely become a little bit more polished, but obviously you're not here for that. <laughs> Uh, today I wanted to talk about something that's actually been on my mind for a long time, which is how to get a really good uh, bass tone. Um, it, it's always been difficult for me to do that, and as of right now, when it comes to metal bass, uh, there's two videos, two main videos at least, that really go in depth. Um, and both of them require you to have some pretty expensive gear in order to like really follow along, kind of. Um, but I have actually been experimenting with some pretty interesting ways to get a similar sound in uh, Reaper. The only catch, I guess, is that I am using an expensive software, Bias Effects, but um, I'm not going to be really talking about that so much as I am just going to be talking about the actual process. And you'll see sort of what I mean as I get into it, because it's pretty replaceable with any amp sim that you have. Uh, as always, links are in the description for anything that... Uh, that I'm using or might be useful to you. Um, let's uh, sort of get into it. So what I have right here is actually a sort of clip of the sound that we're trying to get. So I'm gonna play that. So what that is, it, it is the same sort of bass line if I were to sort of disable the extra effects. You know, there it is dry, and you can hear it's just a normal bass sound, except I have all of these different layers, and it's not the most efficient system per se, but it definitely does get the job done. And that's sort of why I was hesitant to release this video at all, because it's still a huge work in progress, and I'm absolutely certain in, you know, a couple weeks I'm going to release an update explaining how to do it better. Um, but as of right now, this is sort of the method that I have. Um, so I'm going to hop into this other uh, track here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to sort of get that sound roughly in a step-by-step -step process. Now, of course, that does involve a lot of time just dialing in sounds. And, you know, with uh, Reaper, it's not exactly easy to do that uh, quickly and efficiently, especially because it's a free software and so it's going to take a little bit more time. So I will just, it won't sound the best at the end. And I could definitely, you know, go better than what I have right now. But... For the time being, it will just be a good demonstration of how to get started, really. So, I have a dry track here. This is of uh, El Castigator by Killing Rock. I, I have the rights to use this music because I have it in with the owner, per se. Alright, so. Uh, the way that we do this is we're going to split it into... Uh, Four sometimes, I'm going to do three for this tutorial just because it's easy, but uh, three separate tracks. Um, so we're going to call this the root track, because that is what you would record into. And then we have here the lows, then the mids, and then the highs, of course. So this is sort of, consider this sort of like a three band EQ. And the reason why we're doing this and not all doing it in one is because you don't want to apply distortion to the low end. I talked a little bit about this in the... Uh, uh, the video talking about how to get a stock metal tone. Don't apply distortion to low ends because it will sound really sort of uh, boxy and not the best. And that rule still applies to uh, bass, especially to bass, because of this uh, method. You can really hear the difference. So we're going to open up our FX here. We're going to open up our three band splitter. Um, this is going to be sort of the foundation of our uh, work here. We're going to click in uh, or click on this plug-in pin connector and add uh, three extra outputs. So you're going to click this three times and gives you uh, one, two, three, four, and five, six as your outputs. This is a little confusing. There are videos. I will once again link them in the description of sort of what this means and how to read it. But as for right now, all you need to know is to click that button. And then we are going to be dragging uh, and we're going to be sort of patching in those certain frequencies just by sort of following as here. I'm going to grab this route button and drag it here. And this first one, we can just keep it as default because it's going to be 
uh, audio output one two into one two uh, then into the next one we're going to do three four and then finally this into uh, you probably guessed five six or five six into one two uh, we're going to hold down the alt key or I believe that is the option key if you're on Mac and click this because we don't want this to be going uh, to our headphones because we're not listening to this track we're listening to only these three and you can do that by either this might say master track for me it says parent send track um, just or you can just hold down the alt or option key and click on route perfect so now if we play you can see it actually comes out on these three tracks here which means we can actually solo on them and hear each individual track. And that's especially useful for what we're about to do. So we'll start off with the lows. Now, so my mentality with this is that this should be the really boomy and low end part. Um, and we don't, we really want to keep this clean. So no distortion at all, really. Uh, I usually start off, start off by opening up the uh, RIA X comp, the multiband compressor. And then I do solo current band and I play, uh, or I play it and solo the track. And I just want to kind of adjust it until it's very, you know, almost muddy in a way. Uh, compress the hell out of it, um, just to sort of keep it more constant. You can turn up the bass just a little bit. Perfect. Um, and then we can add in an EQ and we're just going to really just focus on getting that really powerful, super kind of, uh, the, really the 75 Hertz range is kind of where you want to go. Uh, this is 70, but, um, really just want it to be that where you can't really tell what notes are playing, but you can feel them, uh, sort of the power of the bass is there. And then on top of that, I'm going to actually put Ozone Imager 2, link in the description, which is a... I'm going to try and pronounce this right, stereoizer, stereoizer, I don't know. Uh, it will take a mono output and make it stereo, which is super useful for this. So we're just going to do this until we can get a pretty good um, sort of stereo sound. We don't want to do too much, otherwise it will be a little overwhelming. Now that we have sort of the lows out of the way, we can unsolo it and we can now hear it compared to the rest of the track. Now if we uh, now if we sort of take this and compare it to without the effects, you can really feel that difference. Yeah, there it is. So uh, up next, of course, are the mids. Now these are really important. Uh, this is where you want to add in just a little bit of distortion, but not too much. And um, so we're once again going to start off with the multiband compressor. Uh, solo this band here. Up that ratio. Lower the attack and uh, raise the release just a little bit. It's not necessarily compressing it as just making it loud enough and a little bit consistent, which I guess is compressing. Sure, why not? Um, I'm going to throw on some EQ just to cancel out some of the frequencies that are still bleeding through. And then I'm going to open up my amp sim of, core, uh, of choice, which is Bias FX2. But uh, if you don't have Bias FX, I, for starters, I highly recommend it. It's incredible the things that you can do with it. Uh, but any amp sim here will do. Um, now, keeping in mind that we're going to want to add in just a little bit of distortion, but not too much, uh, we want to pick an amp that will probably do that well. Uh, one thing that I kind of have stuck in the back of my mind, and I'm not sure why, is that I feel like whenever I'm doing this, especially with this, I have to use one of the bass amps, otherwise it's cheating. But that's that's not true. You, you just want to use whatever gets you the best sound. Now, once again, as I sort of stated in the beginning, I'm not going to spend so much time on this because that's not the point is to, you know, get the best sound and waste 15 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to go with something that sounds at least decent. Um, this is a, uh, custom one that I have, um, bonus points if you can guess who I modeled it from. <laughs> Um, and then once again, just to get a little tiny bit 
drive. This is uh, already a little bit too much. I'm gonna lower that. Perfect. And then just one more EQ at the end here. And now, you can hear it all together. And it has a little bit of dirt on the end, but not a lot. And that's where the highs come into play. Now I am calling them highs, but really they're the upper mids. I don't really like messing around with the actual high end, you know, up here. Usually it's somewhere around this range. So we're going to solo this current band and lower it, up that ratio, lower the attack, lower the release a little bit, get it really aggressive on compression. I'm gonna open up bias effects too. Sweet, so now that it is uh, loaded in, we're going to just sort of uh, I'm going to go with dual routing, and one of these is going to be, uh, let's go with a new stat head. Um, I'm going to add in just a little bit of a high pass filter, or a low pass, the uh, high shelf. We're going to call it that, because that sort of clinky sound, we're going to distort it, but as of right now, it's a little bit hard to listen to. Um, that's better. All right, now we're going to add in drive to it. So you can use really any drive that you'd like if that's another plugin. And for me, this is probably the hardest part is finding the right one to use because you, if you use uh, like an overdrive, sometimes it sends, uh, ends up sounding like this, which is a too bad, but it definitely isn't sort of uh, what we want. And with only so many controls, we don't really have that much control over the sound. But if you do stick with it, you can end up getting a pretty good sound in the end. So obviously as as it is right now, and I will sort of plug this into the pre-made one that I already have set up, um, as this is right now, it's not the best. I mean, I wouldn't argue that it's bad, but it definitely could use some work. And that's when, uh, this has been clipping, huh? <laughs> Let me lower the volume here. Um, and that's when all this sort of sitting and mixing and mastering comes into play. I could spend anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour sitting and mastering and working out levels and all of that. And I already have uh, on many, many tracks. My most popular video as of today, as of right now, is the uh, Harvester, of so uh, Harvester of Sorrow isolated guitar tracks that I made myself. Everyone, not everyone, but a good sum of people have asked me how I, you know, made those. And I kind of explained it to them, but didn't do a good job. I'm going to make a video. But um, the point is to get that sound, it took me like, when it comes to the whole process from when I first set out on this sort of journey to recreate that sound, it was like maybe two years ago I started trying to do that. And then, you know, then I kind of got it pretty close. But when it comes to making that specific uh, iteration of the sound, it took me about like a whole day's worth of work and effort. Um, anyways, so I'm going to open up a template that I have. Let's see, it is a modern metal bass tone. Um, and this is sort of what I have already as a preset for creating a metal base. So let's, uh, I'm going to lower this because I can see where this is going. And we're going to play. So yeah, you can hear it's a little bit different, but it still has what I like to call the clank, which is that high end, um, being distorted. If we solo in on the high mids, you can actually look at the effects chain. You can see it, it took a while and it's still a work in progress. Um, we have a gate, uh, then super, super compressed mids here. Um, if you, you know, can read compression, it's very compressed. Uh, this is a preamp. Uh, link in the description. It's super, super good, and it's free. Um, you can hear the difference without it. 
Now, obviously, it's not 100% uh, mixed in. It's only 38% because if it was, then you can hear it's this. But if we dial it back, found about 38% is pretty good. Bias FX2, I just have it plugged into a pretty straightforward, just an amp. Um, no cabinet, uh, but I mean, you, uh, I haven't really screwed around with this, and as of right now, it sounds fine. And then just some EQ to help balance it out. Um, uh, the lows are also another really important part. Uh, they're really, once again, straightforward, just compressing the very low end and then um, EQing it, boosting it even more, and then stereoizing it. Yeah, this word, stereoizing it. Um, because without it, it sounds kind of flat, but once you add that stereo, it kind of is almost like surrounding. Oh, and you might notice this track actually has uh, four total. Um, these are the very, very upper highs, and this is why I was saying I don't really like to mess with them. Um, they're very quiet, and if I were to boost them, you can hear it doesn't really add that much to the mix. Um, on its own, really, the what's going to be carrying you here is the high mids and then a really powerful low end. The low mids, once again, there's a good bit of dirt on these. I would honestly tune these back a little bit. I think they're a little bit too much as they are right now, but you know, I'm not going to touch it and uh, spend another 20 minutes trying to get this set up. It, it won't be a fast process, I can guarantee you that, but it is a good first step and it did take me a long time to get here. Um, with all that uh, being said, I think that should cover it for today. Once again, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support I've seen in the last, you know, I guess 24 hours, but in the last couple of days and days to come, I'm going to be releasing a lot more videos soon, talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm very excited to be doing this. I'm really happy. Um, and once again, I just can't thank you guys enough. It's really, really, it's it's awesome to have you guys here. It's, it's your comments and all the questions you're asking. It's always just so great to have you guys. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, 